Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at the Regression Suite automation tool. And this is going to be more of an overview video. If you're used to using the, the RSAT tool, probably, probably not a lot to learn here. Maybe you'll get some tips and tricks here. But um, mainly this video is just kind of a first part of a series I'll do on a couple of different videos that are coming out on, on the RSAT. And I try to do it all in one video, but it's just it's too big of a topic to try and do in one. So I'm going to kind of split this up here. All right, so what is the RSAT tool or Regression Suite Automation tool? As you know, a couple years ago, Microsoft went with this one version theme where everybody in Dynamics 365 is pretty much on the same version. So, I mean, you can bypass one or two updates, but, um, but that's about it. Then you're going to be forced to update. So the result of that is that you're continually having to do testing on new versions that are coming out. You know, there's two major releases a year, then there, then there's many incremental releases throughout a year. So in order to kind of help speed that along or speed that process up, the Regression Suite automation tool came out. And so what this allows you to do is take task recordings that you're using right now in Dynamics 365 and turn those into test scripts or automatic test scripts that'll, that the Regression Suite automation tool will run. So it's got a couple different components to it. It's got the RSAT tool itself. It works with Azure DevOps. Also works with the business process monitor. Now, I've, most of the documentation I've seen uses the business process monitor with it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how you can not use the business process monitor in lifecycle services. So what we're gonna be kind of looking at are both the, just using it with Azure DevOps and the tool and just bypassing uh, BPM altogether, right? Um, so that's kind of what we'll be looking at. So today what I've already done is I've already pre-recorded a couple of um, test cases. And I'll explain to you what the test cases are. We'll go into do, uh, De DevOps and take a look at that and, and just kind of explain how it all run, works together. And we'll run some, we'll run them. And then we'll also kind of look at the results today. Okay. So let's just talk about the install of this tool for just a second. There's on, on Microsoft Docs, there's a really good install document. It's pretty much a standard download, install the tool, and then there's a couple sections you need to hook it to um, Visual Studio, um, excuse me, Azure DevOps, and then uh, your D365 environment. I'm not really gonna go over the setup of the tool. That document is really good, um, and, and there's just not, not a, I don't think there's a lot of value in me doing that. Now, the only thing that's a little scary in that is when you get, there's an instruction there to get into a remote desktop and go into the server and edit a WIF file and add your uh, certificate thumbprint in there. That, that is a little scary to do, I will admit, but I, it's, it's not that big a deal. So the one thing I would recommend though is make a copy of that WIF file, put it on your desktop, and then keep a copy of that of the old just in case you mess mess it up as you're editing the new one okay so just just keep a copy of the old one so if you do mess it up and for whatever reason it doesn't the site doesn't come back up just swap that old one back in and you're good to go and then you can kind of look and see what happens so, you, so just so you don't get stuck okay so before you actually do the install of of the tool what you'll want to do is you'll want to go into um, Azure DevOps and, and you'll if you don't already have a project you'll want to create one I've, I've created one here for the RSAT uh, demo here. So if I click in this project, the other thing that we're going to need to do is get into the test plans. Now this does require a different license, so you need a test manager license for this. Now if if you go in, in Google uh, Azure DevOps test manager license trial, there is a trial available. It's a 30-day trial that you can you can set up on the organization and um, and use this for free for 30 days just to try it out if you want to try out some of these things. So recommend doing that if you want to give this a shot. Now, the uh, trial license just gives you access to the test plans and test suites. Those are what um, our, the RSAT tool is going to execute. You can, under a normal license, you can create test cases. So just, just so you know, if, you, if you're doing this for a company, every single user doesn't have to be licensed as a test manager. Um, you can still, with a normal license, create a test case, record a test case. You just need somebody that's kind of got that test manager license to put them all together so that the RSET tool can execute them. So if we come back over here into Azure DevOps, uh, let me go ahead and go back here for a second. So I've, I've got two um, test plans here. And think of the test plan as the overall organization structure. So I've, I've got these named as different uh, dynamics modules, so procurement sourcing and sales and marketing. But there's really no hard and fast rule. You can, 
You can name these whatever you want, but just this is going to be your container that's going to hold all your test suites. Okay, so let's go into the procurement sourcing one, and we'll talk about what the test suite is. So, a test suite. Think of that as an end-to-end -end process, or it's a good. Again, there's no hard and fast rule for these, but test suites in general are going to be your end-to-end -end processes. So you might have several different test suites underneath your procurement and sourcing. Like you might have one for creating vendors. Uh, creating purchase orders, creating purchase orders with serialized items. You might have just different, think of those as your different scenarios, end-to-end -end scenarios that you might do. Now within those, for example, in this one, if we look at the two uh, test cases we have here, which is create PO and create confirm PO, these are going to be your different uh, unit tests within, within the entire process. So if you think about a, a, a process that's uh, create a purchase order and receive, for example, if that was your process that would be your test suite but inside that test suite you will have create a purchase order maybe add lines maybe confirm the purchase order receive the purchase order you know post a package slip etc etc all those individual things are going to be called test cases all right so in Azure DevOps each test case is where you're going to hold your recording so you're going to keep your task recording stored against the test case, all right? So if we open up one of these, we'll go to the uh, create PO one here. Oh, sorry, let me go to my define process here. And we open this one up. So we have our, our test case that's been created here. And what we do is we'll do our task recording and we'll, we'll re upload our task recording against each test case. Now, one thing about the naming convention here, whatever you name your task recording, when you're, when you're bypassing LCS anyway, Whatever your, your named your recording is, you want to make sure your test case is named the same thing. The other option is if you want to name your test case, whatever, it'll also work if your recording is just called recording.xml. Okay, so either either option there will work. Now the other files you see here are the files that RSAT are, are uploading. These are the different run files that um, that it's run, using to run the run the tool. But with really the one that you're going to be looking at is this. Is this recording this is where we're uploading the task recording the other thing that you want to make be aware of is when you do this and you're and you're down uploading them straight to um, Azure DevOps and, and bypassing lifecycle services is that you want to use a developer recording so so when you do the task uh, recording save it as a, as a developer recording okay now we can also look at the steps after you run the uh, after you upload the recording and run this against in RSAT there's an upload step, and that does create your, your different steps inside the, the uh, test case, so you can see the steps that it's, that it's executing there for the, for the test case, okay? So we have two, two test cases here that we've run, so we've got create and confirm a PO. Let's go ahead and switch over to the RSAT tool itself. So again, I've already done the install on this thing, and what you'll want to do is, when you first get it, it'll be blank, and what you'll do is you'll hit the load button, and that basically downloads um, your uh, test cases here into the tool. Then if I go ahead and expand it, and um, I'm gonna say no, I don't wanna overwrite my files. Um, so I've, I've, I've got my um, two test cases here, so this matches up with Azure DevOps. And then inside here, there's what we call the parameter files, okay? So when I recorded this, this file, which is just to create purchase order, one of the things that I did was I, I grabbed the purchase order number and it stores it in a variable. And then what I'm doing is I'm passing that to this, this other, um, other test case. So we can kind of take a look at that. Um, again, I'm gonna do the test case recording in another video. I'll do that in the next video. We'll go more detail. Mainly I'm just trying to describe to you how this is working now. So, but I can go ahead and show you, if I go into the Excel file here, when I did this recording, I, I, I marked the purchase order ID as a variable, and that variable is being stored right here. Now, the other thing that you can kind of see in these parameter files is you can get a message validation. So if you're like, for example, confirming a PO and an info log pops up that says a PO confirmed or whatever it says, you can put that message here in this box and it will confirm that message comes up when the test case runs. If it doesn't come up, it'll, it'll basically fail the test case. And then if you're used to using the older version of RSAT, the 1.0 version, and haven't seen the 2.0 version yet, the 2.0 version makes this, this, this uh, test case steps a lot clearer. This parameter file used to be kind of messy in my opinion, but they've really cleaned this up and, um, and you can see the steps that have run and then the values that have been put in here. So, 
when I was recording this test case and this uh, test recording, I put in this value for a vendor US 104, I put in this item number for, for an item, and then I was validating that the quantity was seven and the, the net amount was 84. So if I wanted to change these values, I can do that. So if I wanted to, when I run this, I wanted to create for US 105, for example, I could do that. Or for a different item, I could create, do that as well, all right? So if we close this one, Let's go ahead and take a look at this other one where we have where we used our variable. So remember, we, we grabbed that variable from that first one. Let me just show that one more time. So in this first one here, this is a variable, and basically I copied that value there. And then if we go look at the parameter file on the second one here, um, and we look at the test case steps, I posted uh, pasted the variable value into this purchase order field here. Now, originally when I recorded this, it had the PO number, so it was 000 dot, uh, 2781 or 2801, something like that, in this in this value field here. So basically what this does is it, when, when the first step runs, when the first case runs and, and completes, then the second case will run and it will basically paste the PO number into this second case so then I can go in and confirm it, okay? And then I'm validating the status. Status 40 there is basically that the PO has been confirmed. Okay, so we'll go ahead and close that one. So to run these, it's fairly simple. We'll just just click click the run here. And one thing that I'll know mention while this is running, we'll, we'll go ahead and let this run here and, and and create these. Is that this tool basically runs at the speed of dy dynamic. So if you think about opening the dynamic screen, going to the the screen you want. Uh, hitting new, typing in the value, etc. It's going to run at the same speed. And, and as we're seeing here on the screen, we'll look at it here as it's running. Um, it's going to run at whatever speed Dynamics is. So it's not running, really running any faster or anything. So the reason why I mentioned this, when you install the RSET tool in a real environment, you're probably going to want to use a um, either a virtual machine or a, a PC somewhere where it's not sitting on somebody's desk because this is going to tie up a screen it's going to be running. I mean, if you've got um, several test suites that are running, it might take all night, you know, or, or all day to run run a, a, a several sets of tests, depending on what what all you're running, of course. But if you've got a large set of tests you're running, um, it might take a while. So you don't want to tie up a, a, somebody's actual PC or computer um, do running these tests here. Okay. So if we look at this one here while while it's processing, this created a sales order. It's just adding an item to the sales order. And we should see it when it comes back here. If you look in the result column, it's blank right now. It should come back with a, or with a check here. And sorry, I was saying sales order, I meant purchase order. Um, so notice that, it, that we, we, um, we got a green check there. And so what it did was it, it created our purchase order. It added an item to the purchase order. And then it confirmed that the quantity on the purchase order was seven, and then the value of that purchase order was 84, right? So those are the, all the things that have to pass for this thing to actually show pass. Now in the second step, what it's gonna do, so again, it closes the screen, it's gonna go back to the purchase order screen, and it's going to uh, pull that uh, purchase order back up, and then this is gonna be the confirm step. So what we're doing here is we pass the PO number that we created in the in the first step here, we pass it to the second case. You'll see it here in a second, it's going to filter down to that PO number, that uh, 2826, it's filtering down to that. And then we're just gonna confirm that, that purchase order. I mean, you'll see, and it's gonna say okay. And then what it's going to do is, it's going to check and validate to make sure that the purchase order actually shows as confirmed. Now, if it shows as confirmed, what you'll see here is that is the result will kick in and you'll be able to see that um, that, that one passed. So we'll give it there. All right, so we got our second check mark there. Okay. Now, if you've changed your parameter files at all, you can you can just upload um, upload your files. I'll go ahead and save that just to just to make sure that the they upload, and that's uploading to Azure DevOps, so, so it's saving up there. So after these have been run, like I said, what we can do is we can go and we can look at our runs. If we come down to the Azure DevOps and click on runs, we can see that um, see that the test ran and it and it ran successfully. And if you get any errors, you'll get you'll get things like screenshots in here and, and that'll kind of help you determine why it why it failed. But um, it does keep track of the runs here. It also keeps track of the runs if you go back if we go back here to the test plans and go to the uh, execute side here. 
we can kind of see, like if we double click on this on this Create PO, I've done two runs on this and both of them passed. So it'll, it'll show you whether or not something passed or failed in that particular run. Okay, so again, a lot of, a lot of information here, I'm throwing a lot at you. Um, this was just going to be an overview of, of the process and kind of how, how the pieces are fitting together. Hope hope you found, saw, see how kind of it works together. Um, the next video what we'll do is we'll, we'll take a look at task recordings, how to create the task recordings. And there's some tricks and tips that, that I'll give you there that, that you'll want to do. So hope you found some value in this, kind of understand how the RSAT tool runs. If you did, please like it and give it a thumbs up. Also, I'm putting out you know, a video once a week. The next video is going to be the, the task recording video. So if you don't want to miss that, go ahead and hit subscribe and hit, and hit the notification bell so you get notified when I upload that new video. Okay, so again, I hope you found some value in this. Uh, thanks for watching. Until next time, see ya. Bye.